A lot of people tend to throw away waste that is totally recyclable. I see cardboard. I see a lot of plant material in this trash can. I even see some fabric here. Now, a lot of fabric, uh, fabric is made out of plant-based materials, such as cotton. Um, and if this were to be a cotton piece of fabric, then we could also turn this into compost. So again, a lot of plant waste is thrown away. Um, and today we're going to learn how to actually make soil out of that plant waste. Everything that we compost needs to be organic material, and that basically means plant-based. We would totally compost something like this, this ugly piece of kale. Instead of throwing it into the trash can, we can use this as good stuff to make soil. Here's a tomato that has sort of split open. You might not want to eat that. If I'm trimming my tomato plants to take the unhealthy leaves off, I could certainly compost that. So the one gray area when it comes to composting is weeds. Weeds are the one thing that we don't want growing in our garden beds. So if you compost weeds, this is a weed that was growing in the ground, you just want to do it without putting the roots into the composter. Yank the roots off of my weeds, and this is also great compostable material. I think we have enough material here, so let's head over to the composter. All right, so I have my compostable material. I also have materials that I have brought from home, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, now these are our compost tumblers here at Roundy Elementary School. Um, there are many different ways to compost, but this is a very effective way because what you can do is throw all of your compostable material inside, add water, and then you essentially tumble it up. And what the tumbling does is it kind of aerates the mixture, um, keeps it from rotting, keeps it nice and fluffy so that it can decompose nicely. You want to sort of be the first decomposer. And that means that you are essentially ripping everything into pieces so that it's easier for the microorganisms, the bacteria, and the insects to break it down. You don't want it to be any larger than the palm of your hand. So this would be a little too big. And you also don't want it to be any thicker than your thumb. So if I look at this charred stem right here, it's somewhat thicker. I might want to break this down a little bit. That doesn't mean that these materials won't decompose. It just means it will take them much longer. And usually when you're making compost, you want your mixture to decompose as quickly as possible so that you have garden soil to use that much sooner. So this is an egg carton I brought from home. Usually when I buy eggs, I like to buy paper cartons because these are compostable. The plastic or styrofoam egg cartons are not compostable because they're synthetic. They're not organic material. So usually I like to think about compostable materials when I'm buying this stuff. The one thing that isn't compostable on this is the sticker. So I'll do my best to pull it off. So when we're adding dry materials to our compost, the benefit of that is to basically make the mixture more fluffy and absorb any moisture. Because if you just had a big pile of green waste, like old leaves and kitchen waste, it would probably smell really bad, right? When we add paper, it sort of helps absorb that moisture, add little pockets of air so that the mixture can breathe because the bacteria that is decomposing our compost is aerobic, meaning that it needs air. So this brown material or dry material, some um, farmers would refer to it as carbon, is definitely very important for our compost recipe. Paper towels, made of paper, good to use. Usually you want paper towels that are unsoiled or were used for some sort of plant-based purpose. If you were eating ribs and wiping the ribs off of your face, you wouldn't want to use the paper towel from that. Um, Eggshells are also really good to keep the acidity of your compost at a nice level. Helps balance the pH, as they call it. And I love coffee, so I'm always having coffee filters full of coffee grounds. Throw that in, the coffee filter will also decompose. Some more of the stuff we collected. Some cardboard from our cardboard box that we rescued from the trash can. Now all of this stuff will definitely sink down a lot once the compost starts to decompose. But the next step would be to add um, water. Now usually when you water your compost, you want it to be the moisture of a wrung out sponge. Meaning that you don't want it to be too soggy and you don't want it to be too dry because if it's too wet, it will start to smell. If it's too dry, it won't really decompose at all. So I'm watering the compost, and as you can see, our bin is sort of draining out down here, which is good so that water doesn't pool. All right, that should be good. And now we have to tumble it. 
this helps distribute the moisture. Um, and it also helps, like I was saying earlier, it also helps aerate the mixture. Usually compost takes three to six months to decompose. If you were living in Hawaii, it would take a much shorter time. Out here in our desert climate, it takes about three to six months. But as you can already see, some of the older compost mixture, um, the older compost is mixing in with our um, new compostable materials. And that's kind of helping distribute that beneficial bacteria. Um, and as long as we keep it watered and we keep it turned in no time, we will have some good compost.